take a seat. And I will call the pathologist, Dr. Nigar Fatima. Unfortunately, I don't know much about her, but she must be an excellent pathologist because she has been called to present the report of a very complicated post-transplant patient. So over to Dr. Nigar Fatima. So good morning, everybody. I'm here today to discuss the biopsy findings of this case, which was reported at uh, Department of Histopathology, Apollo Hospitals, Hyderabad. So we had the history of a 37-year male who underwent re live-related renal transplant. Uh, and on day one, he underwent a biopsy with a clinical suspicion of ATN. We received a one centimeter core, which was processed entirely, and it was stained for HNE, PAS, silver, and meson trichrome. We can see that the core included a portion of the medulla as well, and the cortex is showing few glomeruli even on the scanner view. There were a total of nine glomeruli, and one was sclerosed, and it also included two arteries. So this is a low power image showing two glomeruli and the adjoining tubular interstitium. The glomeruli, even at this magnification, do not seem to appear normal. A higher magnification of the same. Uh, this glomerulus shows mesangial lysis over here, which is dissolution of the mesangial matrix. This glomerulus shows few fibrin thrombi occluding the capillary lumina as seen here. The, uh, patency of the lumina is lost and there are some pink uh, thrombi within the lumina. A closer view of the same glomerulus. On h &E stain, these thrombi appear pink in color while the RBCs stain red. This is another glomerulus showing congested lumina and there are some neutrophils over here. This is the trichrome stain showing few fibrin thrombi. The granular material over there is fibrin. It is highlighted uh, in red. Another glomerular showing fibrin thrombi occluding the capillary lumina as seen in red. These are distinctly different from the RBCs. Though the color seems to be a little similar, you can see the RBC morphology over here. Well, these are the thrombi where there is no RBC outlines made out. So having assessed the glomerular compartment, we'll go to the tubules and interstitium. The interstitium appears to be relatively clean with no significant inflammation. And the tubules showed injury. There is denudation of lining epithelium and loss of some nuclei. And there was no evidence of tubulitis. Occasional atrophic tubules are seen. These darkly stained tubules, which have a wrinkled basement membranes. And on silver stain, the same tubules over here. So um, there was some peritubular capillaritis. It is considered to be significant PTC1 when there are at least 10% of the PTCs involved. And in this, it was like a borderline uh, range up to 10% we could call, maximum of 10 to 15% we could say. And this is uh, mild, tubulite, mild peritubular capillaritis. And on C4D stain, this is one capillary which showed um, focal granular staining. It was not complete as you can see while the inset shows um, positive control, which according to the band criteria, it should be complete, circumferential, and linear. So this uh, case does not qualify to be called as a PTC, uh, C, sorry, C4D1. Uh, it is still C4D negative because there is no complete staining. So to summarize the findings, there was a thrombotic microangiopathy with mild peritubular capillaritis and mild glomerulitis. However, a definite C4D positivity was not seen. Hence, a DAC estimation was advised to exclude an antibody-mediated rejection. A brief discussion about TMA in renal trans allogram. Uh, it can be a difficult diagnosis because clinical and lab signs of HUS may be missing. The incidence of TMA is 0.8 to 14% in allograph recipients, and the recurrence rate has been reported to be between 4 and 60%. A TMA is a pattern of injury, and there can be multiple causes to it. The first being ABMR, which uh, diagnostic findings include C4D positivity in the PTCs and DSA positivity, CNI toxicity characterized by high CNI levels, atypical HUS, either recurrent or de novo, which could have low C3 levels, and mutations in complement regulatory genes and anti-factor H antibodies, antiphospholipid antibody syndrome with a positive uh, lupus anticoagulant, 
high titers of uh, anticardiolipin and beta-2 glycoprotein. Uh, TTP is another cause, and few other rare causes include infection, de novo carcinomas, and recurrent scleroderma renal crisis. So two weeks later, we received the second biopsy of this patient with a history of persistent uh, anuria with creatinine of 9.4. Again, this is the biopsy that we received. It was fragmented and it was again one centimeter in total length. It included cortex and a portion of medulla. There were five glomeruli. And even at this magnification, we can make out some darkly staining areas, dark blue stains, which are interstitial inflammation foci. A low magnification showing a normal appearing glomerulus. There are no thrombi evident here. And the interstitium shows uh, plenty of blue cells, which are lymphocytes and some plasma cells as well. This is another focus of interstitial inflammation. The glomeruli here seem to be normal. And two tubules which are marked here show tubulitis. The darkly staining nuclei here are the lymphocytes, while the pale nuclei are uh, representing the tubular epithelial cell nuclei. There were foci of moderate to severe tubulitis, up to T3 also. This is another tubule showing tubulitis, which is severe. And there was a small artery here, traversing across the core, which showed uh, end arthritis, which is showing mononuclear cells, lifting the endothelial uh, lining and causing uh, luminal narrowing. Higher magnification of the same artery. And the C4D here was clearly negative, with only non-specific staining in the cast. So to summarize, the, there was moderate interstitial inflammation and foci of moderate to marked tubulitis and focal endarthritis. Glomerular fibrin thrombi or small vessel changes of TMA are not evident on this biopsy. And C4D immune stain was negative. So this was concluded as an acute TCMR grade 2A. So to understand the diagnosis of TCMR, we should be aware of the defin bank definitions of these three entities. Tubulitis, based on the number of cells, um, based on the number of mononuclear cells seen within the tubular basement membranes, uh, tubulitis is graded as T0, 1, and 1, 2, and 3. And based on the percentage of cortex involved by interstitial inflammation, interstitial inflammation is graded as 0, 1, 2, and 3 again. End arthritis, uh, based on the luminal area lost, it is graded as V1, 2, 3. Criteria for acute TCMR. To make this simple, grade 1A is uh, foci of T2 with inflammation in the interstitium involving more than 25% of the non-atrophic cortex. 1B is severe tubulitis, which is T3, with inflammation involving more than 25%. Whenever there is end arthritis, it qualifies for grade 2. Again, it is classified as A and B, depending on the severity of the end arthritis. And whenever there is transmural arthritis or fibrinoid necrosis in the artery wall, it is called grade 3. The diagnostic difficulties in a TCMR, uh, whenever the combination of interstitial inflammation and tubulitis is anything less than I2T2, it is qualifying for a borderline or suspicious for a TCMR. It is to be noted that the rejection process may be patchy, and it is likely that the representative area is not sampled. And hence, always a diagnosis of borderline TCMR requires clinical correlation. The type of cell infiltrate in the interstitial inflammation is important because it can give a clue to the underlying process. When there are neutrophils seen, it is an indicator for pyelonephritis. Uh, as in the picture, you can see there's a neutrophil cast and neutrophilic tubulitis with some of the neutrophils infiltrating the tubular epithelium, and there are some neutrophils in the interstitium as well. The presence of lymphocytes in the interstitium and uh, within the tubular basement membranes indicates a rejection process. Presence of plasma cells, as identified here by the eccentrically placed nucleus and a perinuclear half, as a clue to uh, polyoma virus nephropathy. These cells over here, enlarged nuclei with some inclusions within, this could be uh, BKV infected tubular epithelial cells. I mean, whenever there is an atypical lymphoid infiltrate, it is a hint that it's a post transplant lymphoproliferative disease. So, conventional pathology has uh, always been relying on pattern based diagnosis. And there can be a significant overlap between multiple entities. So to overcome this obstacle, there were um, molecular classifier systems which were developed. 
they can recognize distinct effector mechanisms for T cell uh, mediated rejection and ABMR. Uh, T cell phenotype is recognized by granzymes, perforin, gamma interferons, and inflammatory molecules. And while the uh, ABMR phenotype re involves recognition of molecular transcripts involving N NK cell, interferons, and endothelial cell activation markers. These are particularly important in borderline rejections in isolated V rejection, um, which is endarteritis, polyoma virus nephropathy, whether or not they are associated with an uh, TCMR, ABMR with absent C4D or absent C4D and DSA, and isolated C4D positivity without any other histological evidence. However, these tests are very expensive and um, need a, a elaborate validation before they can be put into, um, put widely into use. So the take home message here is there can be multiple causes for a single pattern of injury, hence correlation with clinical and other lab findings is essential. Histopathological changes of rejection can have a patchy or a focal distribution and therefore be missed on a biopsy. Molecular diagnosis is the future and combination of these with the conventional tests offer a promise of improved diagnostics. So there were no surprises here as Madam has already discussed the biopsy uh, diagnosis. So thank you for patient listening and thank you for inviting me over. So actually it's not surprising but uh, what I say what is the f diagnosis in the first time you had a TMA but what is the cause of the TMA in that? Do you still think it was an ABMR? Uh, by IHC here we need at least a single capillary showing a complete staining which was absent in this case. So just going by the uh, C4D on IHC, we cannot say it is an ABMR on this. We definitely need a DSA correlation. Were there any DSAs? Was it done? Uh, we this? have no details of it, sir. No, it so was done at another center and we got only the biopsy. The point is that we are not really clear then about what exactly happened the first time. No? So uh, what, I'm, what I think Dr. Dilip made a very important observation that if you have a ABMR with anuria, on day zero of the transplant, that kidney almost never recovers. Hmm? I have not seen any recovery. I don't know whether anybody has seen. This must be a unique case in that case. That's why I was thinking it could be an ischemia reposition injury. But is there any way to differentiate between these things on a biopsy? No, TMA in any cause will look alike. So there are no distinguishing features for the cause as such. It's only a pattern of injury and it's not a diagnosis. So in the end, what would say is the actual diagnosis in this patient? Right now. It requires clinical correlations. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, Priyamada and you are handing over to each other. She is saying it needs pathological correlation, you say it's clinical <laughs> correlation. Sampath? I feel uh, <clears throat> we should acknowledge uh, the work of the surgeons uh, at the donor side. Because uh, many a times we are focusing too much on the recipient side. And during the donor uh, uh, nephrectomy, if there has been too much of handling and ATN has occurred, that could have been the important reason why this has happened. Possibly. Rajesh and then Manisha. <laughs> See, I strongly believe that uh, this is very unlikely to be a AMR, we go, we do it an immunological process, as you rightly said. I strongly believe this is very unlikely to be an immunological process related TMA trigger and the TMA improving and then going for an AMR. This is my feeling. I do agree with all of you. But having said that, as Dr. Sambat pointed out, any uh, manipulation of the vascular uh, endothelium is a trigger. So there is likelihood of a probable uh, comedomial abnormality, which is, which is there, which is probably dormant which has been triggered as a TMA and that manifested. And then that improved, that is some other. So it's not a severe form of TMA. So that is what I feel. And again, the, the, all the Adam TS levels and factor H probably has been sent after plasmapheresis, though the levels may not have a significant correlation. And unfortunately, there, was, there is no surprise in this CPC. The, probably the clinical discussion of the pathologist actually concurred <laughs> towards the end. Thank you. For the localized here, we have evidence of dropping hemoglobin platelet dropping so much, you can't even just say it's a localized TMA. So regarding the diagnosis, I still go with ABMR because most of the um, TMAs are de novo post-transplants and I mean the cause is 
ABMR, epidemiology more common, and I congratulate both the speakers for highlighting. I mean, beautifully, Priyamda has dissected the biopsy and made all relevant points. So at this point, with the data available, it is difficult to exclude ABMR. I do agree. I mean, um, on the first day and recovered, that seems to be against it, but still I'll go with that. The second biopsy does not show TMA at all. My, uh, why I came here is, uh, it's neither the fault of the discussant, either of them, because the complete case details are not, not given. I would like to know where was this case from and what was the DSA, I mean, who was the institute which provided this case, and we would like to know what finally, I mean, was the diagnosis, what's the DSA, if DSA is negative, were the other antibodies done? So, I mean, if that person could speak up. I think I'll ask Dr. Ravi Shankar, uh, who is the primary clinical discussant. So, this is actually this case was sent from uh, Vishakhapatnam. Uh, the Dr. Bhaskar uh, is from uh, Medico Hospital, Vishakhapatnam. So, I do not have full details. In fact, I, we requested him to come. He couldn't come for the meeting. So, I sincerely make an attempt uh, request here. So, this year we are struggling, like last few years we are struggling to get CPC cases. I got only one case from all over the south. And then this is the only one case. So, then we discussed in the scientific meeting, then we said that, okay, let's go ahead with this case. Earlier we thought we'll take cases from like PGI, that is the postmortem. So, our south zone said that no, we will take only cases from south. So then we are not getting cases. I'm, I sincere request the people in the audience, they should make attempt to send the cases. So we are not getting cases despite of so many times I send messages to WhatsApp, mails and all. So very, very, very difficult. So please, I request, I'm not there next year, but it will be easy for the next secretary to make a uh, plan. Thank you so much. This is Dr. Bhaskar. So I think we should acknowledge and then thank him for sending this case so that we could make this presentation today. Yeah. yeah, a small comment actually. See, there should not be any depth of cases for CPCs uh, in the South East region, especially from the teaching institutions. You should have actually made a small circular and a brief note to all the academic institutions and even other hospitals also, for, for, with a time of for one and a half to two months before or something like that. And the CPC also should be given to a, 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 chapter, a group of people who can re write properly. What I understood that even that the age of the patient is not mentioned in the CPC protocol which is distributed to the people. So the CPC also should be write, written in such a way the way it is written in the CPC in NEJMs. Please yes, make a note next yeah. time onwards, please write it properly also. That's also equally yeah, important. Agreed. I just wanted to say that we are in touch with the person who has presented the case, I mean who has given the case and he said the DSA was done, it was a negative. Thank you. For this patient? Yeah, for this patient. Oh, okay, okay. That's good news. But so, it again negates the, I mean, against the diagnosis of ABMR for this patient. So I think we should go into the diagnosis of ischemia. That's my person now. Actually, with this case, everyone is to, to his own diagnosis because it doesn't really matter. Because finally, all we have, all we know is that there was a TMA, there was an ACR, but beyond that, we do not know much. <laughs> Thank you. Looks Last like words. Apart from the serial hemoglobin platelet, they should have given the tropi of Dr. Bhaskar also. <laughs> it should have been really been high. Wait, any other comments from the audience? Yeah. If there are no other comments, I think we'll close the session. We thank Dr. Premada and Dr. Nigar Patel. Yeah. for the pathologist for the nice discussion. Thank you all for the audience for the good participation. Thank you, speakers and chairpersons. Now we request chairpersons to give the moment to, to both the speakers, both the speakers to come on the dais. I request Dr. Ramasamy to give the moment to chairpersons. Dr. Ramasamy, please. 